and we have quite a lot to talk about uh, in particular uh, Leicester City uh, the departure of Ranieri and last night um, a superb performance a convincing victory over Liverpool uh, Liam when we last spoke I think you were not convinced that sacking Ranieri was the right thing to do uh, whereas John and I thought he should go uh, what do you make of last night's performance uh, in terms of what preceded it well there must have been something uh, very much wrong at the club uh, you know since found out that uh, um, you know, there the Leicester players are saying that they didn't, uh, they didn't uh, canvass his his, uh, his sacking. Um, but it's you know you, things drip freed from the club, and I believe the director of football, uh, a guy called John Rudkin, who I know because he was uh, academy manager there at Leicester uh, when I was academy manager at Arsenal. And I think it was him who, uh, who you know, felt the pulse of the dressing room and uh, and decided to go to the owners and say, look, we need to change. So there was something very much wrong between the players and the manager. But uh, to see the transformation in in effort alone, Eamon, never yes. mind uh, some of the improvement in like Vardy's finishing and so forth. To see the improvement in effort, I tell you something that. You know that dressing room wasn't really uh, pulling for the manager and really pulling for the club. And uh, although you know you say that John and yourself were were looking for uh, for change, I felt that was right. It's a it's a pretty big indictment on the on the players. And you know these guys are have had improved contracts on on what went on last season. Uh, they play not only for the manager but they play for the fans and the club and um, I feel that uh, they should uh, be ashamed of themselves in some ways because I watched them closely against uh, uh, Sevilla uh, on Wednesday and the effort was nowhere near as good as it was last night so uh, I think it tells you something about the modern day footballer There was a very good piece uh, John in the Sunday Times by a journalist called Jonathan Northcroft, I think his name is. It was very well sourced and uh, it did speak about uh, disenchantment in the club and a change in Ranieri. Um, he uh, changed the training regime, didn't do anything the first season because he arrived late in June, so he didn't have time to do anything really uh, yeah. when he first arrived at the beginning of the season in which they won uh, the Premier League but after winning the Premier League uh, there were lots of changes uh, to the way they trained uh, positional changes uh, and also he spent 80 million uh, last year and I think the feeling was uh, that he didn't get value for money but uh, I wouldn't agree with Liam that the players should be ashamed of themselves I think if the manager isn't uh, managing, if he's got uh, discontented players, there may well be good reasons for that discontent. Well, I think there obviously were, uh, as far as the players were concerned. I mean, nobody knows until you're in the dressing room. We can only judge from the outside. But my take on Ranieri has always been that uh, he took over a very, very good situation and was wise enough not to interfere uh, in that and, and manage in his own way. I, I don't particularly think he's a good manager. And I think this season, having taken over the team and done remarkably well, I think it was very wise not to make changes. Uh, now we have to manage uh, this particular season. I don't, think he's a, I don't think, reckon he's a good manager. And uh, I think when he had to manage, then I think the players did become disenchanted, to say the least, um, but I don't agree with Liam that it's the modern player. I think this has always gone on with players. I don't think the players are right not to try. Um, but I think we've all been we've been in football a long time, and it does happen that if you're if you're not happy with the manager and he's making uh, things uh, doing things that they shouldn't be doing, and not for the benefit of the team, um, then the players will 
object to it. Um, I'm not saying it's right, but that's the way it is and always has been. I think what they call it losing the dressing room. I think he lost the dressing room completely. And I wasn't surprised with last night's performance, I mean, because it happens in clubs, uh, whether it be right or wrong, that the players then do pick it up because they want to show that they weren't at fault, that the manager was at fault. But I think I, I was agreed. I agreed with the sacking of Ranieri because you have to do what's in the best interests of the club. Whether the players are fault or the manager are fault, I think the, the 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 change was right, and I think it will prove to be right. Um, so uh, I think there's bound to be a lot of sentiment, and there has been a lot of sentiment towards Ranieri because of the job he did last year. But as we know, and it's a well well known thing, if there's no sentiment in football. What you did last year is dead and gone. What you did last week is dead and gone. And I think it was the right decision to make to uh, to to um, sack Ranieri. Uh, Liam, there's a couple of things I'd like to put to you that I, I'm pretty certain of. One is uh, Craig Shakespeare, who was Nigel Pearson's assistant uh, before he was sacked and was Ranieri's assistant. There was a, a rift between Shakespeare and Ranieri uh, and that was uh, quite well known. And I, I think the, the vibe was that uh, Ranieri didn't take ownership last year of the, the whole situation. He let it take over. But when they won the Premier League, then and he was given £80 million to spend, then I think he did take ownership, said, OK, this is my uh, job now, this is my project. And he bought, for example, that Musa from CSKA Moscow for £15 million. Now, he's a very, very iffy player, Musa, uh, we've seen a lot of him. He does it now and again. But he made changes, uh, Liam. And I'd kind of be inclined to agree with John. I've been in clubs where the manager is screwing up. And it does get to you as a player. And morale is the question. Their morale lifted as soon as he was uh, taken out. Um, so... I'm not sure that the players should be ashamed of themselves uh, and I'm not sure uh, that Ranieri didn't bring the misfortune on himself to some extent. Well, you, what you get when a manager leaves a club and it leaves a club in, 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 uh, you know, in, in circumstances as Ranieri have done where the team are on a losing run or being threatened by relegation, uh, when he leaves, you then get your, your drip fed into the media, and I'm sure Craig Shakespeare will have his um, promoters as well, who will be saying, you know, he disagreed when, when uh, you know, results were bad and Renier he was going his own way. But Shakespeare wasn't, you know, drip feeding anything into the media when, when they were winning and they won the league. You know, he was kissing Ranieri and throwing his arms around him I seem to remember and so were the players uh, I don't know what's going on whether he did try and change direction um, it's, it's possibly true I mean, and it's possibly true that he alienated players but I think it's uh, you know it's uh, well, let me, it's let a me bit harsh to be saying it's a bit harsh to be saying and John saying that he's not a good manager you know when he's just Brought the title to Leicester, who never won the title for. Yeah, but let me they just. Never won it. Well, let me they put a couple of it, things you know. to you that are that are fact. You know, you have to. Well, also, Damon, I mean, let me say, you have to remember that they just escaped relegation when he did take over. Although they won an amazing amount of games towards the end of the season. Yeah, seven of their last ten. That, but they were a relegation candidate when Ranieri took over. Yeah, they, no, I wouldn't agree with that, Liam. I well, wouldn't agree with that. They were, they were, no, they they were one of the favourites. John, the bookies, the jo John, the bookies had them favourites for relegation, or one of the favourites for relegation when Ranieri took over. And when Ranieri took over, they even said that they were even more likely to go down because he had this uh, iffy record in in football of of late. Now the guy, the guy's gone and won. The guy's gone and won the Premiership. I know that. I know what and, happened. And, and what, now what, he's, uh, you know, he's, he can't manage. It's not, that's not really fair. John, that's not let, really let fair. Liam finish, John. Hang on, Liam. First of all, I say, Liam, I wouldn't care what the bookies say. 
Uh, they're, not, they're not the greatest Jews of Hughes, but the, what you what well, we they're usually right, John. John. They're usually yeah, right. They're not usually, <laughs> but that's, up, that's up to them. But when 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 he took over the team, they were a well-established team in the first division. They were they had escaped relegation by a long way, and they were a very very good team by the end of the season. So they weren't relegation candidates at the start of the season in what they did from the Christmas onwards. What I'm saying is, Ranieri took over that situation from Pearson, where they were a good team by the end of the season. They had a good spirit, they had a good way about them. He took that over and he didn't have to do anything and I think he was wise enough not to do anything. At the end of the season, last season, it was a different situation altogether where Kante went, a few players went, they'd won the league, which was great. And I, I give him credit for that. He was very wise not to try and do too much. When he had to manage on his own, Liam, I think he's made a mess of it. A mess of he wasn't on his own, John. What do you mean, manage on his own? You well, know? he didn't. He, he took over. He, he, when he took over first, he had the team established in the way that they played, the spirit that they had from Pearson's uh, departure. When he came to the summer, now he had to put his own stamp on it. Well, if he, if he thought he did anyway, and I think he did try to put his own stamp on it, and I think he made a mess of it. Just so well, well, and they one of the they things... weren't relegation candidates at the start of the season. Well, they, they were, John. If you ask anybody, you're, maybe you know you're wiser than everybody else, but they were uh, rele well, relegation candidates at the start else, of the season. I'm trying to go on the facts. Well, hold on, let me throw but a I'm fact I'm not trying in. to be wiser than anybody else. Liam, let me just give you a fact uh, to, that tends to support uh, John. Nigel Pearson was the coach. They were looking at relegation. They won seven of their last ten Premier League games just before Ranieri came in. Um, now, that's just the fact. It doesn't prove anything except that they weren't a basket case. I mean, no, but they were, they were almost certainties to go down with seven games to go, Eamon, or something like that, weren't they? You know? Well, they won and seven. And they had this amazing run. Yes. And I agree up to a point with John. But, you know, to, for John to say, uh, you know, think he's a bad manager and, and you know not even give him any credit for winning the Premiership I, I gave uh, him great credit I said he was very wise to do what he did and let them play of course I'm giving him credit Liam but I think his record as a manager in my opinion hasn't been good but what he did no. at Leicester was very good. He was wise enough to let it happen the way Pearson had it. And as Eamon said, with 10 matches to go, they looked like relegation candidates, but they finished up that they weren't. They were well, in, they, they, they finished with a great season and they were well up the table by the end of the season. Not well, a so that's, you know, that's what he did. Yeah, yeah I, I hear what you're saying, John. And, you know, there's a, lo a lot of good points in there, but also the, the transformation in the effort the players gave from one week to another, I think, casts serious doubt about the character of the players and we have to remember that uh, our watching last night that Liverpool weren't exactly brilliant and we'll Leicester are not out of trouble yet and Craig Shakespeare and the players haven't rescued the situation by any means so let's wait and see and talk in maybe six weeks time OK well just let me make this point uh, to both of you guys I mean the, the real if you take Gary Lineker when Ranieri was appointed Lineker tweeted that this is a joke, he said. Ranieri's just been sacked by Greece for losing 1-0 at home to the Faroe Islands. Uh, can they be serious? That's what he said when Ranieri was appointed. Last week, when Ranieri was sacked, he said he cried. Um, so there's all this kind of nonsense going on um, in the media. The, the fact of the matter, Liam, is surely this, and John, I'd put it to you, that if they hadn't removed Ranieri, they wouldn't have got that result or that performance against Liverpool last night. So therefore, they are going to stay in the Premier League now, and that's what was at risk. It was too much at stake. But you're certain of that, Eamon, that they're going to stay in the Premier League? Oh yeah, after last night's performance, Liam, they got the next game is Hull. And you can see that last night they were back uh, firing on all cylinders there was intensity about their play they won their tackles and really they were the team or they looked like the team that won the Premier League last year played good counter-attacking football Liverpool were very poor and we can come to them in a moment but even when you're playing a poor Liverpool you have to drive it home and a 3-0 win is pretty convincing so that suggests that uh, what the owners did was in the best interest of Leicester City Football Club.
Well, I think it's a bit early to be saying that, Eamon, and in six weeks' time, I'm sure we'll be speaking again, and if I've got to eat humble pie, I'll eat humble pie, but uh, but let's wait and see, you know. I think Liverpool made a major contribution to Leicester win last night. Yeah, I do. Well, I, I mean, can I just finish on that? I, I think that the, I think they will stay up. I think that there's a lot of sentiment going around at the moment towards Ranieri, and I think he's a very affable man. And what he did last year was very, very good. But ultimately, you have to do what's in the best interest of the club. Last year is dead and gone, and you have to do. And I, what I'm saying is, I think it was the right thing to do to sack Ranieri for the benefit of the club. If the players lay down tools, that that was wrong. Uh, but in the interest of the club, then I think the, the, the second was right, and I think they will improve uh, and, and, and escape relegation. Uh, just a final uh, thought that I have, and I'd like your response to both uh, to, to uh, both of you from both of you. I think the players, you know, they had the adulation of winning the Premier League. They had um, big enhanced new contracts. They were they got a hundred grand car each as a present, all that stuff. It can can't it, uh, Liam, uh, uh, take away your drive and motivation a little bit, uh, and that may have been a factor as well as whatever Ranieri wasn't doing. Well, I'm sure it was a back uh, a big factor, Eamon, and also they did overachieve last year for what they are, you know, for the standard of player. They did overachieve massively, you know. So it was bound to have a correction uh, this season anyway. Now, it, you know, uh, 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 a bad kind of situation developed and, and, uh, and a, a bad mentality developed at the club. Now, whether Ranieri was, was entirely responsible for that, you know, I doubt it. You know, I do think that what you're saying is... Is is probably had a major factor in that they all got a bit carried away with themselves, and the way they played in the Champions League made you know no comparison to the way they were performing in the Premier League. So I think it's the players that have to have a good look. I would doubt the character of those players now. So uh, let's wait and see, as I say, how they get on with, under Craig Shakespeare. You know, he's going to make the most of what's happened. Uh, last night, but let's see in the long run what happens. Uh, John, it, it does. You you were a great player, and Liam was as well. But I was a journeyman. I can identify with those guys. If I got that adulation all of a sudden when Millwall uh, won the Premier League, and I got a new hundred grand a week contract, a uh, hundred grand car, and all of that stuff, I think I'd have gone mad. Well, I think I would as well. <laughs> <laughs> but the, as we know... No, the, but the, you, the, the, you never... Yeah, I know what you're saying. The spirit in this press room is very, very fragile, Eamon. And things like that, you, you wouldn't... We don't know. We went there. But what happens can happen a lot if Fardy got a lot of uh, attention and got a lot of credit and got a big contract and Maris did as well. Who knows? There could be jealousies. Uh, and the spirit that got them where they got could be could be broken. It's very very fragile a spirit like that. So there's all types of reasons that could uh, could account uh, for the, for their demise this year. Okay, and but usually it usually if the manager takes the credit, then he has to take the blame. And uh, it, ultimately, it comes back. It does come back to the manager. I don't agree. I agree with Liam. The player shouldn't down to that's wrong. But that some, lots of times there has to be reasons for it, and usually it's usually the manager that uh, that that that's at, at fault. Ultimately, by not keeping the spirit, it's a very very difficult job, as we know. And one season to the next is totally different. But I think I, I go back to the position that I was in before, where I thought it, whether it was right or wrong of the players, I think it was right for the, the club to sack Ranieri. I think they were definitely going to go down, and now they have a better chance of staying up. OK, just one final point to put to you, Liam. Uh, the departure of Steve Walsh, uh, whose brother, Mickey Walsh, I think he played for Ireland with, and maybe John did as well. Uh, he was the guy, the chief scout. He signed Mares for 400000 from Le Havre. He signed uh, Kante for $5 million, and he signed Jamie Vardy for a million. To, for a club to lose someone of that um, uh, calibre... And evidently, from the players they bought last summer, uh, they, they, he, his loss might have been felt uh, in another sort of way that would, in its own way, impact on the team. 
Absolutely, I mean, I think it's one of the most important positions at a football club is chief scout or director of recruitment or whatever you want to call him. You know, yeah. that guy obviously works very, very hard and has a very good eye for players. He's gone to and, Everton. Uh, as, I, he's gone to Everton think, as director of football. Yeah, he's gone to Everton, and I think some of the players he's brought in there already are doing their business, doing their business very well. So uh, he's obviously a, a very talented guy, and. Uh, you know, I think Everton's uh, are going to benefit from his presence. Right. Now, 